with completing the transfer of ownership of land from South African Development Trust land to affected communities is therefore critical, but also long overdue. Finally, we are under no illusion as the pressures on land reform, redistribution, and expropriation grows with each passing day. We must, as a collective, pursue a path that both addresses the historic injustices whilst unlocking the latent economic potential and relieving the pressure resulting from land hunger, poverty, and gross inequality. Honorable members, without further ado, let me now welcome the Honorable Minister and hand over to her. Please proceed, Honorable Minister. You have 20 minutes. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson uh, of the Popolo Committee in Gossesville, Velile Mandela, for that uh, opening address, which really highlights and reflects the important issues that this department, as well as yourself, as members of the legislature, we collectively need to address in order to redress the imbalances of the past. Indeed, there are many areas which we would have liked to reflect on today, but we've decided to narrow our presentation to reflect on the state land release that was announced by the president last year, and also to review and give you an update after our first uh, presentation to yourselves to see how far we've gone and what we think would be the best way to move forward. We've also reflected specifically on matters that were raised last time relating to Guachu as well as the issue of uh, So we are also going to reflect on those. And I wouldn't take 20 minutes, uh, Chair, because I think it would be good to have more time for reflection and discussion amongst ourselves. I will then hand over to Kiri Jindobe, who is now going to take us through on the presentation. And after we share, I'm sure it would allow us discussion, but also advice from yourselves, having listened to us on how best we move forward. I recognize my deputy ministers who are also here in the platform as well as the senior managers. Thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Bound over, you may proceed. Thank you, Chair, Honorable Chair, Honorable Minister, Honorable Members of the Portfolio Committee, um, <clears throat> the support staff, um, Acting Director General and my colleagues, I greet you this afternoon. I'll move straight to make a presentation as indicated by the minister uh, without making much introduction because that introduction has been already covered by the minister. Indeed, today we're going to present progress on the state land allocation, especially after our last meeting with the portfolio committee. Next. The content of the pre presentation is as follows. We'll deal with the purpose. We'll try to outline the acronyms, progress from the last meeting, our adjusted project approach, high-level process to support the revised project approach, high-level project plan, critical activities, pipeline to, for achieving provincial phase one targets in terms of hectares, feedback on the Guachu intervention, as well as the Rajas matter, and the recommendation to the portfolio committee. Um, this has already been covered as our purpose is to give progress in the implementation of the state land allocation and briefing the portfolio. I'm not going to dwell on the, um, the acronyms. Uh, they are available on the presentation, uh, but this is for the benefit of our honorable members to refer. Next slide. Mm -hmm. This is the progress that we're going to provide. Firstly, it will look at the establishment of the committees that are critical for the implementation of the project, establishment of the approval structures, application captured in the central database after the closing of the applications, which all are completed. Next slide. We'll also deal with the issues related to the verification and scoring with specific focus. 
Um, Mr. Inban, there's a slide. There's something that is obstructing my, my, my view. I'm not sure whether you can be able to remove that. On the right hand side. I see the Clear now? Yes. Can you can you bring it back? Okay, it's fine now. We're going to deal with issues related to verification and scoring. Uh, go to the next slide. So give report with regarding the land right inquiry process. We also give report regarding the farm development support assessment and the training and capacity development project as a whole. With, re with, res with respect to the establishment of the steering committees and its substreams that has been completed, um, there are seven, eight of them uh, that are, were critical in terms of ensuring that there's proper governance with regard to this project. One of the one of the substreams is the application substreams, which has already done part of its work in terms of, of in terms of preparing for the applications, making sure that their applications are ready. That has been done. The next one deals with the data and electronic management system. This was very critical, uh, honourable members, especially that in our other project, the COVID nineteen project, we were relying much on the um, manual. Um, system rather than electronic, we have moved to an electronic platform in terms of this project. We also had a communication substream that was responsible for advertisement and communicating um, you know, everything about the project to, to, to with the media and also informing the nation. Land right inquiry substream, this became one of the most important substream in our project because its responsibility was to conduct land right inquiries on all properties <clears throat> with the aim of ensuring that those rights are protected by law and should not be neg negatively affected by the project. As we all know now that there has been uh, individual and some communities that have been on, our, on the state land. We however ensured that we conduct land right inquiry to determine their status and determination was made out of that. That will come later in the, in the presentation. Farm development support already on our mind from the beginning was to ensure that um, once people are allocated land, there must also be support for production. That also on item number seven, number six, that deals with the training and capacity development of uh, um, substream, which is responsible to ensure that proper skills are in um, and training programs uh, for the farmers that are allocated land are actually conducted. We also anticipated that there will be disputes, and hence we had a dispute resolution substream that is responsible to ensure that any form of dispute that will emanate from the allocation or even includes even issues include, that include um, land invasion are actually properly managed uh, through the dispute resolution. We're also fully aware that at the end of the process, there will be people who may not be happy about how the whole project was conducted, either as individual or as communities. Then there is an appeals substream that deals with issues of appeals for anything that they may not feel aggrieved about the process. Establishment of approval structures. There are three key uh, approval structures, which is the one in the district, one in the, and one in the in the national. They all have got different function, um, um, as indicated in the next slide. Can you move to the next slide? The role of the DBSC, which is in the district, in summary, is just to ensure that collect information that is going to be necessary to be utilized uh, during 
adjudication process to make sure that they verify information, including uh, against personal home affairs uh, and, and other institutions that are government related to ensure that no one from, from government benefit from, from this process. Also to conduct the screening, verification, as well as to do mandatory site visits to ensure that the shortlisted applicants um, actually familiarize themselves with the land that are going to be provided. Once they've done that, everything now goes to the PTC, which are going to be in the main, going to verify whatever comes from the district and thereafter conduct interviews from the shortlisted people and thereafter make recommendation to the National um, Adjudication Committee, which is sitting in the national. Next one. I've already covered the part of what the uh, NSAC uh, stand for. It, it's mainly to confirm mm -hmm. or reject whatever recommendation that comes from the district, I mean, from the province. And if they are satisfied, then they approve. And thereafter, land application, I mean, land allocation will, will commence. Next slide. Applications captured in the central database. Next, next slide. All applications that were received via online system and manual were all put together into one database. These are the applications. We have received 43,000 applications. And I want to make it very clearly that I'm talking about application, but not applicants. The highest comes from Limpopo, followed by Northwest, and, and followed by Eastern Cape, and the rest is, 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 is clearly indicated on the slide. I just need to, to, to clarify the issue of the last part, which is incorrect, LPIDs. These are people that have applied, but it has been In terms of the eligibility screening, what are the issues that we're, we're looking at to ensure that everybody qualify? We're looking at whether they are from the previous dis disadvantaged groups or individuals, whether they are natural, a natural person, whether they are older than 18 years, whether they are uh, public servants, whether they are whether they are currently farming and whether they are compliant 
with SARS or whether they are being exempted to, for SARS purposes. Next slide. Screening is also based on the following priority groups, gender, terms of women, youth, and person with disabilities. Other important categories include the labor tenants, farm dwellers, unemployed military veterans, and NARSEC youth, and unemployed graduate. We also take into consideration qualification and also the technical interview questions that are going to be conducted as a final way to before adjudication. Ah. This is just an automated snapshot of how we do the scoring. Next slide. Sorry, Chaperson. Can make my These are the preliminary outcomes of the verification process. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the number of identity documents confirmed as invalid by the Department of Home Affairs, I can't see the latter, latter part. I don't know what's happening. There's something that I don't see there, but I think it's over 400. We also have got a number of public servants um, who, who, who are actually uh, still with, with we, we have not completed their cooling period of 24 months. There are 475. Uh, those who have applied being public servants, those who have not completed their 24 months as per the, the policy, there are 320. So combined, there are almost over 700. Verification with the CIP, CIPC and veteran are still in progress. I mean, military veteran uh, department, they are still in progress. Next. Can we conclude? Okay. Um, can we move to the next slide, um, Mr. Nbon? This is the summary of the land right inquiry that I've referred to uh, before. Um, there are issues that have emerged that looks at the existing land claims, uh, existing communities that are in the in the uh, that have occupied the land, farm dwellers, as well as those they have to renew their leases. Can you move forward? The development support. This is the work that has been done so far in terms of development support doing the assessment. The number that is there of 1.5 uh, billion is, the co is for comprehensive support, but we are not working on that. When we are going to develop our startup packages, it will be much reduced cost compared to that. We are still finalizing that. Next one. This is just a picture of some of the people that have actually occupied part of the, of the state land. Next one. These are just the areas that are going to be focused on in terms of training out of the skill assessment process that have taken place. Next slide. This is the two-phase approach that we are embarking on. Firstly, we're dealing with the existing communities, existing land claims, farm dwellers, labor tenants, and renewal of leases. This is from first part of our approach. That is what we're dealing with. But this is synchronized already into the second phase where we are going to deal with where we could not be able to do land right inquiries, where, we'll not, where there are farm invasions, and where we could not finalize our land right inquiries. Next slide. This is the overall process. I'm not going to dwell on that. Um, can you move? To, yeah. This slide <coughs> deals with our timelines in terms of what we are doing and how we're going to complete it. The first part has already been done on the green one the 140, 54,000 that has already been allocated. This is what we are busy doing the allocation of the, the 144 plus 145,000 hectares. Well, however, we are moving towards dealing with the difficult ones, which are the 256 uh, moving forward. Next slide. Can you move forward? We've dealt with this before. This is the progress to date in terms of how we are handling the, the first phase that I've indicated of 289,000. In the middle, recommended for approval, this have already gone to the PTC that I've spoke about, and it's just left for finalization with the national um, um, uh, committee, which is gonna be sitting as from the, the 12th. Next one. This uh, is, I'm just left with two slides, uh, 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 Honorable Chair. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing now. I'm wrapping up. 
is with regard to Guachu, uh, what has happened. Um, uh, there are 95 properties to an extent of 35,000. They consist of the Transkei, former Transkei, the traditional uh, authority uh, settlement, as well as the Guachu farm dwellers. Um, the land rights inquiry has been completed in all properties. There has been meeting that was held um, uh, with the members of the Guachu community. However, there has been some challenges um, because of the differences within the community. And I hope some of our honorable members are fully aware of that. Next slide. However, the province, the province is busy working on this matter, um, trying to establish um, contact again with the leaders of the various factions in the, in the Guachu with the intention to have another meeting. Already a letter has been written to invite them to a meeting where they have to deal with the issues that emanate from the land right inquiry and thereafter proposals that will come from the report in terms of how the matter can be settled. The next one. In terms of the Rahasi, as it was publicized, um, um, the two portions of the farms that um, um, Mr. Rahasi has actually applied for. At the time, one of the portion was advertised um, accidentally, um, while the other one was not. While, while that happened, it was during the time that we were already busy dealing with the transfer of the land. I can safely report now that the land was successfully, both portions have been successfully transferred to Mr. Rahasi on the 22nd December 2020. This is the last slide. We recommend to the portfolio committee to take note of progress of the Alcacha State Land Allocation Project and also the high level project plan and its critical activities. Thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, and my apology for taking a little bit more than the time that we, we budgeted for. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Baun Robe. Uh, Honorable uh, Minister Mamuti Tiza, thank you for your opening uh, remarks. And also, let us uh, acknowledge the presence of the deputy ministers that have joined us and officials of the department. Honorable members, we will now open the session uh, for questions of clarity. And please be brief and straight to the point. We will give each member two minutes. Honorable Kabe. Honorable Kabe. The Honorable Kappa. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thanks a lot for this uh, presentation, which tells us that the department is moving forward. Just a few questions. One, just to get a clarity, some understanding whether there's any or there has been any kind of training, retraining, or reorientation, reorientation specifically for the officials who are engaged in this, in this task. Secondly, uh, if also can also assist with the relation between farms and hectares, if maybe always the hectares are translated into farms, it will always have a meaning. And then the other one, are there any possible challenges that we expect that we are going to be, to be facing here? And then the last one, Chair, if it's unconstitutional, please throw it away immediately because it relates to uh, how do we address what I regard as a conflict or contradiction. The, the, the categories of the people who are supposed to be preferred, practically in agriculture, they are not the ones who are always willing for, to farm. 
So in this case, I think it's, it's eligibility and ability. I thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Kappa. The Honorable Mestain. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, thank you for arranging the meeting, but I, we haven't learned much from last year, but let me leave my comment. Chair, my question to uh, the department or the minister would be, under what program does the Mr. Ivan Kluter's farm eviction fall? Because obviously he's not part of the 700,000 hectares that we're discussing today. But we know, and I've sent you that uh, request, Chair, with the letters from the Eastern Cape and the same in Mpumalanga, that Mr. Ivan Kluter is not the only person that gets evicted from his land. So I would like to find out what program is that? Can we just find out from the department what that program is called uh, and what is the policy for that program? Chairperson, secondly, when can we get a full database? I see that Mpumalanga and Northwest is still uh, uh, falling behind on the finalization. Um, we have seen a slide 19 with a snapshot or a screenshot of a database. Um, I want to find out when will we be able to get a database to see um, how many uh, land has then been identified. Thirdly, Chairperson, uh, does the department have a full database of all land or ownership in the, in the, in the name of the two departments, land reform and agriculture? I will refer the minister to written questions that I've asked in December or November about two districts in the country. I've analyzed those two districts and I found a lot more land registered in the name of the Department of Rural Development that's not on this list. And I have done some research and all of them is under plus or other programs that the land was bought under. So can I find out if the department is giving us full details, um, disclosure of the land in the name registered of the department? Last question, Chairperson. Uh, when will we know when, what available uh, uh, funding is available for compensation or the comprehensive cost for the farmers? Because that was one so, of the failures in the past. We, we transfer land and then there's no funding. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Stein. Honorable Ntate Matiasa. Well, th thank you so much, Honorable Chair. Uh, let me welcome the presentation of this report by the Minister uh, and uh, appreciate the speed with which uh, the Minister has deemed it necessary to, to compile this report halfway while the work is, uh, is, is being carried uh, through. Well, I've got the, 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 the report, of course, yes, uh, answer some, some questions uh, that we have asked the minister to provide us with answers. Uh, we appreciate that though the report is, the report partly answers the question, but at least there is a report. Now quickly, I've got a few questions. The first question is, uh, Honorable Chair, now we know that of the 700,000 hectares of land, the breakdown of that gives us about 627 farms. Now we know the number of farms are involved here. It's important that we at least have got that clarity, which has been lacking when this, the announcement was made first by the minister last year. Now, of these 627 farms, would want to know the status of each farm in, in the sense that are these farms, farms which have been leased in the past and these farms have been having leases or occupants, uh, and, and, and if the answer is yes, it means that these are new, not, these are farms that are not newly acquired. These have been state farms which have been occupied. We can you conclude. Would need to know the, back, the breakdown of each of these farms. Uh, in relation to Guaju, and the Guaju matter should not be a, 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 
a political food, uh, football that we play about because it's a serious matter. I need to know from the minister of the 95 farms that are there, uh, occupants or the so-called farm dwellers. Can include? Farm dwellers. Have they been recognized in the past? Have, have, been, have they been, been given leases to occupy the land? And if so, why the leases have are not been confirmed for about for 30 years? Thank uh, you, Dr. Matiasa. La, last uh, one, there is an no, association called the there's an association Guadu Community. We are out of time. Guadu Communal Property Association. I want to know if that association is recognized. And if not, why is it not been recognized? Thanks, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Honorable members, can we stick to the two minutes so that we can afford each member time to pose a question and also responses from the minister? Honorable Chair. Thank, um, thank you, Chair. A quick one, Chairperson. Um, it's only one, actually. I'm not sure, Chair, whether it has been uh, explained uh, before, Chair, as uh, uh, I logged in a few minutes late. Um, Chairperson, I noticed that on the presentation, Western Cape is not reflecting. And uh, my question is, why is that? Is there no agricultural state land in the Western Cape that needs to be allocated? Because on this, on this presentation, it's not reflecting, Chair. Can we get the answer? If not, can we get a, a comprehensive a, a, a report that the committee can 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 have? Because if this is is Western Cape is not included there, then that this that would mean is not is not uh, accurate. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Chair. Honourable Marshall. It's not on the platform, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mbabama. Thank you, Chair, and you will forgive me once again for the uh, video. My first question is, um, it says here on slide 39, an intervention meeting was led by the deputy minister and a plan has been developed and it is awaiting further discussion with the deputy minister to finalize and implement. To me, this smacks of a top-down approach. When they say an intervention meeting was led by the deputy minister, were the residents of Guadu there in that intervention meeting? And if a plan has been developed, was it developed with the residents? Again, uh, another question I'd like to ask is, they say that the provincial officers is, has issued an invitation and uh -huh. is awaiting a response from all Kwaju stakeholders. The Kwaju stakeholders that I am in touch with have not received an invitation at all. I would like to know when was this sent and the, the date where this envisaged meeting is going to be. And did they, did they send it to all the Kwaju stakeholders? Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mbabama. Uh, Honorable uh, Priet. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, maybe to start from the beginning, I'm very glad to see that we are now using an electronic system and that we are not using Excel sheets anymore. But Chairperson, maybe into that, who developed this and um, this electronic system for us? At what cost? Um, what is the terms of reference of this? And will we be able to use this electronic system for our other matters? And I think Honorable Stain um, actually gave a good example of that in terms of the plus farms that we do not quite know which is where. Um, then um, on page, I can't remember, it was right in the beginning, um, we spoke of that we're currently in the phase where current occupants of this state land is being dealt with. Um, now, I would just like to know, and I think maybe Honorable Matiasa um, uh, touched on that, how are we dealing with the current occupants? It makes me, it makes me worried, and I think Honorable Sena, one of the other members mentioned evictions as well. What are we doing? How are we, how are we, we doing this? That worries me. Um, in terms of page 37, um, we speak to the phase one targets, and I know that 
um, the Northern Cape is on zero percent because their um, their committee is only sitting and scheduled to sit um, in two days time. But worrisome as well is Limpopo is at 77 percent only, whilst the rest of the provinces are 70 and above. Um, how are they addressing it? And in my mind, that is a backlog. How are we going to address that? How are we going to ensure that we don't have provinces that fall behind? <clears throat> Because if you're behind in phase one, it's just going to continue in terms of that. And then maybe just your yeah, compensate to run farms. These, this state land that we are acquiring, and we've seen the residential properties, but how are we actually, um, are we going to equip our farmers who then get land that you can actually farm on to ensure that that land doesn't also go barren? Chairperson, I hope I was quick enough. Thank you. Thank you, Akbare Priet. Ndabezita. Honorable Thank you, Chairperson. Um, mine will be just a, a concern, Chairperson. You know, um, out of these uh, 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 properties, the, departments take, the department takes it too long to release the, the, the farms to those uh, who, who are eligible to, to sort of occupy them. As a result, they end up being vi properties vandalized. What is the department doing to protect uh, those properties before they get vandalized so that uh, the, the beneficiaries who would be coming in will find the, the, even the houses, or, or, or the, ha the houses on, the, on those farms still intact rather than what we are seeing uh, when, when we drive around uh, on, 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 on such properties? Thank you. Uh, the Honorable uh, Mashati. Ma'am Mashati, are you on the platform? She's not chair. Okay. Uh, the Honorable uh, and Honorable Masipa. Uh, Chair, do you mind if I don't put my my uh, video? Please go ahead. Chair, I think my some of my uh, concerns have been uh, raised. I'm having uh, two questions that I want to really ask is that uh, how is the, the department going to just make sure that the process uh, can be trusted? And I think this will also relate to the issue that we just uh, came across in the Western Cape that pertains to Mr. Ivan Glute, who has uh, really been um, a qualified, meaning, you know, been a good farmer over the years and uh, had the opportunity to, to farm and been moved from one farm to the other, as well as the case of Ndate uh, because I think the people are questioning the the processes that the department obviously sometimes do follow. Uh, the question is how is the department making sure that their processes are trusted? And I think the question that I'm going to reiterate again, I think it was also posed was the, the farm capacity in terms of uh, being able uh, to be farmed because we know that many of these farms have been vandalized. So the question is, what what are the conditions of these farms that are being uh, allocated to the uh, to the farmers? And secondly, is there a budget that is envisaged to ensure that those that need really the um, the capacity from a financial point of view are supported adequately to make sure that these farms are are productive, not to be dilapidated and uh, be like you know. Uh, be squatter camps on those farms. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Masipa. Honorable Montwedi. Chair, quickly, I, I want to check which audit is the department relying on uh, and in terms of them having agreed to then allocate some of these farms, uh, as we have seen that they have advertised. I'm asking which audit chair, because it's a serious concern. There's an audit that was done by the Department of Public Works 
that I am seeing that most of the farms, because they are occupied currently by white people, the department has not advertised that. I want to know why. And uh, most of these farms that are advertised now are farms that are occupied currently by black people. And the department has advertised. I want to, let me not conclude that they're occupied. I want to know from the department how many of the advertised farms are actually occupied now as we speak. Uh, and what are the activities that are happening in those farms, Chair? Uh, another thing, Chair, is to say, I think as a committee, we requested the department a comprehensive plan, a comprehensive plan on land identified uh, productivity, recapitalization, and development, including a consultation report on the entire, I've missed it, but I think I've not seen that chair. So I just want the minister to actually, uh, uh, and the department to respond in, 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 some, of, in some of those questions, uh, uh, chair. Thank you, uh, Dr. Muntwedi, the Honorable Metlape. Uh, Thanks, chair. Chair, I'm having trouble with my network it comes and goes. Um, Chair, let me also reiterate the issue of um, farms that are available for new tenants. I think it will be proper that we know as the committee if this program helped to get new tenants so that uh, we know that uh, in previous uh, engagements it was indicated that other farms might be occupied and this process will regularize that uh, occupation so it will be proper that we know out of the assessment i saw the slide that talks to assessment that moving forward to our interest is to know new farms that can be occupied share the eligible eligibility screening slide 22 there's a bullet that talks i think it's the last bullet that talks about the, the applicants sars compliance or exemption i don't know if it was part initially on the application and in my mind chair i just want clarity for what is the importance of this doesn't it take us back to people who are not working, who are not having any means of income, who have not been there, who are trying as a farmer subsistence farms to get into the space of having farms and being excluded by SARS compliance. My last point chair is on uh, slide uh, 33 that talks about categories of incumbent farms. It talks about the number, the total hectare is it possible to go back to for consistency sake to the total number of farms because obviously we have been tracking different provinces with the number of farms that were available now if it talks about hectares we might i myself let not talk about uh, i lose now track of how many farms that have uh, been screened on phase one thanks Thank you, Honorable Tape. Honorable members, is there any other honorable member that I have not recognized? If not, uh, let me uh, sponsor uh, two or three questions, honorable members. It is commendable that uh, the establishment of the steering committee has been completed. What is the role of the steering committee and how will it coordinate and work in cooperation with the land district councils? Yes. In relation to land that was already occupied by the time the department made available and advertised land to be allocated. Has the department conducted the land inquiry on the land that was already occupied? Uh, the capturing of applications for land allocation has been completed and the central data place created. What is the total number of applications received and what is the department going to do with other applications received that either meet or did not meet the criteria or requirements for land allocation? 
in particular with reference both to Gauteng and the Western Cape. Why has there not been any um, applications made in that regard? And in this juncture, I would like to be more biased to the Sen and the Khoi people, uh, whom uh, are uh, some of the first uh, uh, people to be located in these parts of the world. Have they been considered for uh, farm uh, uh, applications? And uh, will they be prioritized in receiving these farms? And in Pumalanga, only one farm is outstanding as has not yet been surveyed, awaiting meeting with the traditional and awaiting confirmation with the traditional authority. Are there other reasons that might warrant great concern? Honorable members, that's all from our side. We will now hand over to the honorable minister and the, the officials of the department. No, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson and honorable members uh, for the interventions that have been made and question seeking clarity. I would like to go back to the issue we raised earlier, honorable members, on what farms are we talking about? These farms that were under South African Development Trust. So this does not include plus farms. This does not include trunker farms which are also state led And I think it's important for us to appreciate that. In the Western Cape, you did not have South African Development Trust because in the then apartheid government, there was no homeland in the Western Cape. You have got Tranka land and we will come and report how far are we with that process, which was given to colored communities. So I just want to clarify so that it's not like there was some kind of discrimination of the Western Cape. The land parcels we are dealing with are those land parcels that were under the South African Development Trust. That will be the same with Gauteng, for instance even though there were few lands under the areas that fell under Nkangala, which were in Kwandebele homeland. We did report that after president announced in February, we started a process and within that, there were allocations that were already made. So the 600 odd farms that were advertised in October was the balance of that six of that seven hundred thousand, and I think, Chairperson, this answers the questions that have been raised by other members, like Honourable Stain, in respect of the state land that we are talking about here. We were very clear from the beginning that what we are dealing with now, as I said in the last meeting, is the unfinished story of land that was taken away, supposed to be given to communities and left like that, no regularization of it was done. So what, what we are trying to do is to complete that process. And I think it's important for me, Honorable Chair, to say we commit to come back to this committee to say, this is the extent of land that has been acquired by the state under the program PLUS as it is known. These are the allocations that have been done on plus land. This is the remaining land parcels that have to be transferred so that we are all at one. With regards to public works, a majority of land under public works that are state land, those they have released to the Department for Restitution, for instance, which the Department of the Commission is actually dealing with. The others have not yet been released because are either used by other state departments such as defense and others. So we will come back again, but what we were dealing with on these lands is the South African Development Trust land. And I think Chairperson, that helps to clarify what 
is the land that we're talking about in this instance. Deputy Minister will deal with the issue of Kwachu. He would also clarify uh, on other matters. The issue of um, training, indeed, we have as, it's just that we didn't have enough time to but we did indicate in the slides that already that work on development support as well as training has been worked. We can come back and give a detailed plan on when will it commence and how will we do it? What will it comprise? How much resources have we attached to that? Thank you very much, Chair. I would allow the team to actually respond on detailed other issues. As maybe let me start with Deputy Minister Quacha. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Minister. I'll just take one or two questions. The, the first one, perhaps, is the one that relates to Mr. Clute. The issue of Mr. Clute that has captured a lot of public attention is actually a, ver a very old matter. Mr. Klute was allocated a farm in 2013, a farm called Daily View. He together with Mr. Theos Beko, and this was in relation to the PLAS project. And then in due course, when they were operating, there were very, very serious problems between them and the differences that appeared between them necessitated a situation where we then allocated Mr. Klute a farm called Helek Vars. And then we had a lease agreement with Mr. Klute in relation to that farm. That was not during this administration, during the past administration. Having done that, it was later discovered that that the previous owner who had purchased the farm from had actually an agreement with someone without us knowing, a lady called Ms. Mumeshe. And as Mr. Klute and Ms. Mumeshe operated there, again, a tensions and a fight ensued. Now, when that situation did ensue, we actually found later that, in fact, because we were in the process of wanting to evict Ms. Kumesha because we had thought that she had trespassed. When we realized that she had not, we then took Mr. Klute, who felt that, and we also felt that perhaps his life would be in danger because he, had, he reported that people wanted to physically harm him. We then, as a sort of refuge, placed Mr. Klute in the farm called Colenzo, whilst we're looking at resolving this particular problem. That is the farm that Mr. Klute was placed on as a form of refuge. We did not have a lease with him vis-a-vis -vis that particular farm. So that is the issue that is related to Mr. Klute. And we can say to this portfolio committee that the department knows and acknowledges the fact that Mr. Klute should be given land so that he can be able to farm. That's the issue of uh, Mr. Klute and uh, that has been asked. It's an issue that we assist with at the present moment and we think and know that we would be able to resolve it amicably without any conflict that is in the public domain now. The second issue, Chair, relates to the issue of Kwajo. It also has got its own history. Mr. Matthias, the Honorable Matthias, rightfully relate. Uh, relate to it not to be used as a political football. We do agree. We have been seized with this matter for quite a while. When this particular process ensued of state land, uh, of state land allocation, 
It came when we were already busy in the area of Guadu with a land rights inquiry. Now, the 95 farms referred to here, let me just say that in relation to that land rights inquiry, we have now finalized it. Guadu has become a volatile area where it is difficult to do our work. Many times our officials have been sent out running there, but we were able in the process led by me to get all the necessary important stakeholders in the area. And at a particular stage, the CPA people are speaking about here did allow that we can be able to go there to do a land rights inquiry. We have now finalized that land rights inquiry. There was a meeting where there were serious differences between the traditional authorities, the municipality, and the CPA that, uh, that is referred to here. So what we have requested is that we would like to present our land rights inquiry in a forum of the leadership of the area, instead of taking that land rights inquiry that has been finalized into a mass meeting in the area, because we know that such mass meetings can and have been volatile in the past. Now, where we are now, the legal resource center that represents the CPA has indicated that the CPA feels that we should not, they, they don't want a meeting with us. They want us to send a report. We insist that we need to have that meeting so that we can be explained how we reach the conclusions that we have that we have reached. And as soon as we smoothly do that, we will then be able to undertake this important work of allocation in that particular area. Now, as it relates to the CPA and whether it is we, the CPA, it is called the CPA, but the CPA becomes a CPA when it is compliant. And it becomes so yeah. when we have action. Can we uh, request, please, that you mute your microphones? Uh, for those that are disturbing the meeting, please mute your microphone so we can allow the Deputy Minister and the officials of the department to give responses to the questions posed by honorable members. Thank you. We may proceed, uh, Deputy Minister. We have requested to the people that are leading this entity they call the CPA, that we need to have a workshop with them so that we can be able to make sure that they are compliant. And we we're saying that the issue, so that we know who stays there and who does not stay there, so that there are no problems in that regard. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, the officials of the department who may want to uh, give responses. Uh, Bao Ramasodi. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, uh, my, my apologies um, for, for that. Um, we, we have taken notes um, in terms of the questions that the honorable members have asked to the department. With the time pressures that um, the committee has, um, we committed that we will send all the written uh, responses uh, to Parliament on this matter. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, you may proceed, uh, Dr. Okay. Ramasodi, and uh, speak to some of the issues. We will okay. uh, appreciate uh, uh, the questions to also be answered in writing, and we will extend you an opportunity to do so by the 19th of February uh, at noon. But please proceed. Okay. We will utilize uh, at least another 10, 15 minutes to get your responses. So at least honorable members have received feedback from you. Continue. Thank you very much, um, honorable chair. Appreciative of the time, the extended time that is being given. Um, the 
the questions that um, can be categorized into three, I think, in terms of the applications, the land rights inquiry, and lastly, in terms of the um, allocation process. Let me just indicate um, the criteria that we have utilized for the applications is a criteria that is um, congruent with what we had said in terms of the, the application process that we had outlined as the department. And therefore, um, we, we are sticking to the letter. Uh, Honorable Tape was indicating the tax compliance. I think that's one of the issues that was there. Um, there are two issues that are there. It is either the SARS compliance or the exemption to, 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 to that. And the exemption would then talk to the letter part of individuals who might not necessarily be in a position to be compliant to SARS. But the, the, the opportunity that we are taking in terms of uh, SARS compliance is to ensure that everybody who's the, in, the, in the bracket of being assisted by a government or is in line to receive benefits from government would also be um, in line with uh, compliance with the laws of the country, or if not, uh, should have have the necessary exemption so that um, the projections that we are having would be in line with um, legislation. The, there is also in terms of the application pro uh, process to indicate how many of um, the applications um, or have we received right through. We have outlined that. Um, we have also indicated those that um, we are still, the 106 that we are still trying to locate and see which farms did they uh, apply for. So that's, that's the application process in terms of the broad issues that are there. I'll give to Ndadendobe to talk to the, to, to the content issues relating to that. On the land uh, rights inquiry, um, each and every piece of land that has been advertised goes through that process to ensure that um, we know who's currently occupying the land and how did they come to occupy that land. So the questions that were asked from um, Honorable Matthias, uh, Matthias, uh, Matthias and uh, Honorable Montuedi um, relating to the, the, the inquiries that we are having have been responded to. What we may need to do is to just indicate um, what that land inquiries um, were saying in terms of outlining of the farms that we, 600 odd uh, farms that we have, 621 farms that we are having, what is the inquiry on each and every farm? What are the findings for each and every farm? And that we will do, Chairperson. And then lastly, in terms of the, the allocation process and maybe the, the how we are going to ensure that there is a catch up, um, the committees that have not set are sitting on the 12th, starting from the 12th. Uh, those that um, are behind, there is a process that we are engaged uh, in as a department to ensure that they are uh, up to par with the other provinces. We will then make sure that um, that kind of process that we are having uh, to ensure that we, 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 we engage with the provinces to ensure that everything is done according to plan. There is a slide, uh, Honorable Chair, where we outline um, the, the breakdown structure of how we are attempting to, to deal with this. Um, that clearly stipulates each and every aspect where we need to um, be completed. So the dates are there. Each and every process that we have outlined has got an end date um, and everybody who is within the three committees uh, that are there would be kept to ensure that these dates uh, are not missed because we understand the importance of this work and the importance of this work also um, to the populace of South Africa. I'll then hand over to Ndatendobe just to deal with the um, uh, tangent issues that were asked uh, specifically from, uh, I think, Honorable Mbabama had uh, a few questions that um, would have been dealt with outside the Guaju issue that uh, needed some attention. Uh, Honorable, um, I think at this stage, um, there was also questions from Honorable Tsapa. Let me just allow Ndatendobe to uh, give us an outline. Thank you very much, Chair and Honorable Members. The, the, Honorable Chair, can I move on? Yes, please proceed, Pound uh, over. Thank you so much. And, and thanks for the inputs from the, both the min, uh, Honorable Minister, um, uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, as well as the acting uh, uh, DG. They have covered much of the areas, but I'll just try to fit in where I realize there has not been emphasis. Um, training of officials for this work, yes, that has happened. We have um, even including at the national level, everybody who participate 
uh, on this process, there has been uh, what we can call an orientation of how the work is supposed to be done. It's not a training per se, because it's the work that they know, but in terms of how we want the work to be done, that has happened. <clears throat> With regards to the, utilize, use, the using of hectares or farms, I think that will, will clarify. Um, obviously, when the state president announced, announced us, but there are farms. But we'll try to, in, in our next presentation, to make it very clear um, um, the relationship between the two. Uh, possible challenges, yes, there will be possible challenges. One um, is the issue of invasion. It's one of the challenges that we're going to face. Two is the high number of application and the land is not, uh, the land does not get bigger. So we have, we have got limited land but we have got high interest in terms of application. That in itself will pose some challenges. Uh, with regard to database, I think the minister have clarified that we are dealing not with all state land. We're dealing only with the state land that is under SADT. So, <clears throat> so, so we do have information in terms of that. If it's needed, we can be able to provide in terms of the 700 hectares that we're talking about. That is possible. Um, <clears throat> With respect to issues related to uh, breakdown on leases, uh, if it relates to the plus land, we'll be able to provide that, whether if it is related to the state land, um, in terms of what we are dealing with now, this is it's a, it's a work in progress. We can only provide where leases will have been provided because there, there are many areas where there are no leases. The Guachu has been dealt with, um, the issue of Houting and Cape Town, Minister handled that very well. Um, with regard to the system that we are using, um, to Honorable Briet, um, the system has been designed in-house. So there was no additional cost to, for the development of this system. It, it was a, a huge test on our site, but we have made it. It was developed by our uh, internal staff from IT. Um, with regard to how do we deal with the, uh, the, those that are occupying land, we have already dealt with by indicating um, the exercise that has been done through land right inquiry to all the farms that have been advertised. Regarding the problems that are lagging behind, a, a DG has, has, has handled that. Um, with respect to the budget, we also have dealt with that. Um, the issue of what do we do with the people that are in the farms, definitely those who have got rights, those rights have to be respected. And, and that is our approach. And that was the reason why we have to go through the land right inquiry so that we don't uh, prejudice those who have already accumulated the right because of commission or omission by the state not to have acted earlier on um, to, to deal with this matter. And those people have stayed there for a, quite a long time. And if they've they have got rights, that must be respected. We will have, as a department, also respect those rights, meaning that they are not going to be removed. But in case of land where it is vacant, where, 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 where there's opportunity for new applicants to occupy the new land, that is also in the process. Um, I thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. If there's anything that I've left, I've got colleagues here that can actually fill that in. Thank you. Colleagues of uh, Mount Dobe in the department, any other officials who'd like to have a bite? If not, um, honorable members, due to uh, the short time we had, um, I've uh, noted that some questions have been, been attended to, uh, particularly if you look at uh, what uh, Honorable Stain raised uh, in terms of uh, uh, what policy or program is uh, current uh, in terms of plus farmers evicted. For example, Mr. Clute is not the only farmer that seems to have been affected by this. So uh, the committee would like to understand uh, what policy or program is being utilized 
to evict uh, uh, farmers on uh, plus uh, uh, land. Uh, oh, Honorable Mbabama also asked a question pertaining to Kwaju, and uh, she was specific uh, on that uh, in terms of was the Kwaju leadership part of that meeting uh, which uh, uh, came out of the deputy minister's intervention. And that hasn't been attended to. Uh, and if the solution is uh, so as to avoid a top-down approach, it will be important if we understand if there's been a sufficient uh, consultation. But uh, honorable members, I will take this up uh, in MENCO, in the management uh, committee of uh, uh, our committee, so that we can look at what the possibility of uh, the committee going to Kwaju for an oversight so we can meet with the communities there. And we need to also understand uh, the COVID regulations if we will be permitted to carry out such an oversight due to uh, level three uh, uh, regulations that have been levied. So allow us time to be able to engage with Menco and see what the possibilities are, and we'll be able to revert back uh, to you on this. But in the interim, let me take this opportunity to uh, request the department in uh, the, the absence of the minister who had to uh, be excused to go and attend to other uh, political uh, committee meetings. Uh, the deputy ministers that are with us and the officials, please note that we would like the responses in writing no later than at 12 noon on the 19th of February, which is next week, Friday. You can send us uh, uh, those answers in writing. We'll greatly appreciate that. But let me take uh, this opportunity, honorable members, to thank you for having afforded us the time to be able to do our work today. It has been indeed a marathon uh, from the earlier session with the ITB at half past 12 to two. And again, now uh, uh, this uh, evening session. We want to thank you and may you go and have a restful evening and thank uh, the minister and the executive, both the deputy ministers who have been able to attend with us on these two sessions uh, for their time and for engaging and giving a briefing to the committee. Would like to thank the officials of the department uh, that uh, were able to put the presentations and also uh, participate in giving responses to the questions posed by the honorable members. Let us uh, list, but uh, last but not least, thank the respected uh, members of our media who have been uh, uh, having interest on these issues that we have been engaging with today. Uh, we thank everyone uh, else, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests that were able to join us uh, on these sessions. May you have a wonderful evening. The meeting stands adjourned. I thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so for them, cut you up. One of them, cut you up, Dad. You have to change this, this change this, and I'll declare a parliament. We are Zabu, Mobay Covet, I vumbo, I'm in the end now. Jack, oh, Zabu, I'm going to say, 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 Zabu, I'm
Albertina. 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 